What is up, Facebook Live? Welcome to the Friday Night Spotlight, Northeast Kayak Fishing TV. Tonight we have John Ferreira on from 3X's Fishing. He's going to talk about the tackle that he makes, and I'm going to pick his brain a little bit uh, with some questions about the what he thinks makes uh, good jigs and the the quality of the products that he uses. Um, so let's get right, in, right into it. We're going to bring John on right now. What's up, John? How's it going? Great. Uh, first, I want to say congrats on the soon-to-be addition to your family. Uh, yep. Do you know what little... do you know what it's going to be yet? Or... Yeah, it's going to be a little boy. It's going to be a little uh, fisherman. Awesome, man. That's awesome. I got four boys myself, so... Uh, I know it's great to have boys, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> girl, Amen. I have one girl, and man, she gives me more problems than all four boys put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, where'd you get the name from? Uh, Three X's fishing. What? Where'd that come from? So that's a that's a common asked question. Um, Three X's. It's it's for straight edge. Um, it's a uh, term coined in. The type of music I listen to, it uh, basically means sobriety. It means no drinking, no smoking, uh, no drugs. So, I mean, that that's played a big role in my life. So, something that I, two things that I play a big part of my life, uh, that's where the name came from. That's awesome. I did not expect that to be the, the meaning. Uh, that's big, man. Uh, I was a alcohol abuser for a long time. I mean, I still drink here and there have a few beers yeah. at a cookout, something like that. But I was a heavy drinker for a real long time. And actually kayak fishing is what saved me. Uh, I found kayak fishing and not being able to get wasted on the water uh, has saved me from drowning myself in alcohol. So yeah, that name actually means something to me now too, you know? That, so that's good. Right. Um, yeah, that's awesome. What made you start making baits? Um, started a, a couple years ago. Uh, I was just kind of sick and tired of bending out hooks, like breaking breaking hooks, weed guards, skirts falling apart, um, and then being particular. Sometimes I want a specific color on a specific weight jig, and then you know I'm just going through it, or I'm either pulling the skirt off a jig and then tying my own on it. So I decided hell, why not invest in some, some pouring stuff, some molds, and then, you know, see where I can go, make some jigs for friends, make them for myself, and then, you know, maybe sell a couple here and there. So that's, that's what I've, I've been doing. How long you been doing it? Uh, only about a year and a half now. Not, not very long. Um, so I'm still relatively new. I've made some friends in, you know, the, the, the niche where I've been able to talk to and, you know, it's, it's been, it's been really awesome. Great. Um, are you using lead or tungsten or tin? What what material are you using? Um, so I have to, I've been using lead, um, but I have to start using a, um, a tin bismuth mix, uh, which is going to require a little more investing because I've already started pouring lead. Um, I wish tungsten was feasible for a small guy like me, but that, that you, you compress tungsten. It doesn't take, you don't pour it. Um, so I wish I could, I mean, I could probably, you know, outsource some tungsten jigs, but then I can't, you know, use specific hooks that I want to use or customers, friends, you know, so it's, I'm going to have to move to the, the tin bismuth mix, um, probably within, before the next season starts. Right. Yeah. I know we, we fish a lot of places that, uh, have switched to that non-lead. I think New York is that way, right? Um, I'm not positive about New York, but I know it's basically New England. Um, right. New sure Hampshire. Like New, yep. I know New Hampshire. Uh, I think Maine has gone to no lead. Maine, yep. Uh, Rhode Island, we can still use lead. Uh, mass. Can you guys still use lead? No, anything under, anything under an ounce, you're, you're supposed to use, uh, something, but any, not, not lead. Really? I didn't know that. That's yeah. good to know. Thanks. <laughs> Cause uh, I fish are, mass quite are, a bit. There are exceptions. Um, spinnerbaits, 
and uh, bladed jigs. They, since they have that attachment to it, right. um, you're actually allowed to use them. Okay. Yeah. I I didn't know that tungsten was pressed either. I thought that was poured just like lead. Yeah, no, tungsten has like a over 5,000 degree melting point. Holy so to shit. be able to pour it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's So when you read a package or uh, a jig and it's going to say like 98% um, tungsten, pure tungsten, it, the other 2% or whatever odd percent is left is actually some sort of resin or whatever to keep it together when as compressed. I always wondered why it was always like 97% or 98%. Yep. Now I know why. That's exactly why. I mean, can't be tungsten. I wish I could pour tungsten. Uh, not pour, but I wish I could. It's so expensive. You know, it, it is very expensive, which would be one of the things I would like to do because my jigs aren't terribly expensive. Right. Um, but also the sensitivity. You can't beat it. Man. No, when you're you dragging can't. a jig and you feel, we, you know what you're touching, basically. Right. Um, now, if you were to use tungsten, can you even get that in the U.S., or do you have to get it from another country? Uh, you can you can outsource it, but you can also get it. I mean, half the guys that get all their stuff is outsourced anyways. Right. Um, but you can get tungsten powder. Uh, just I don't have the means of pressing it. Right. What kind of hooks are you using? Um. Well, I have a variety of hooks. It all depends what people want to use. Oh, so you um, you allow people to choose what kind of hook? Yeah, yeah. For for the most part, sometimes I make bulk, uh, like a bulk batch of jigs, and that is what it is. But you know, I have, if you if you want to request it, you, I have a bunch. I have you know, Mustad, Boner, uh, Gummies, um, and then I have Trocar. Uh, Yes, that's just about all I have. I personally, I personally love to use. I'm, I'm a big trocar guy, so. Really, yeah. I've uh, I've steered away from them. I tried them a little bit. Uh, it seemed to tear the plastic to shreds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they I, are I, super I, sharp. <laughs> I yeah. mean, but it's almost too sharp for me. Right. I got, no, I completely understand that. Yeah, I'm a big VMC guy. I love VMC hooks. Yeah. Um, but those trocars are super sharp. When I first yeah. saw them yeah. at uh, Dick's, I think, I picked up a package. and I, Just looking through the package, you could tell. It was like, that thing is sharp. Um, yeah, they got the, the, the surgically, chemically sharpened yeah. with a three-point needle point. It's It's... They're good hooks. I mean, I, I think the first time I used them was a couple of years ago. I had gotten a, uh, I think it was like a KVD jerk bait or something with some trocar hooks. Yeah. And I took it out of the package on the water. Um, I think I got it in like a mystery tackle box or something. And as I pulled it out of the, the package, <laughs> I went across my finger and my finger just, I didn't even notice, but I cast it and my finger was bleeding like a lot. And I was like, wow, that didn't even score me. And then and I was like, these things are sticky. So I just I started using them and it, they're they're my go to. Yeah, I'm a big Wesley Strader fan. Um, yeah. So when I saw that he was using those, and then I saw him at Dick's, I was like, I gotta try them. I mean, they seem like great hooks. Uh, just tear up plastics. I use soft plastics a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've never tried a trocar on like a jig or something i'm sure with a a big fat craw on there it's going to be a lot better it's not going to tear Absolutely. that up but uh yeah. like stick baits and stuff like that it tears right through them yeah i mean a hook's a hook yeah I mean, it, most part there's there's not much difference it's just i guess it comes to a mental thing confidence yeah and, you know how that goes out now uh you make net heads too right i do um that's that's one of the reasons why I started porn. It's because I I was fishing a tournament and I caught I caught a bass. It was probably a dink. It was probably like 11 inches or something. But I uh, when I went to go grab the fish on the boat, I uh, pulled my rod and I had I had the fish lip, but it didn't even matter. It was only an 11. Uh, and the hook just snapped, and I was like, wow, these these 
blank man hooks. Yeah, uh, I already know. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is some cheap stuff. So, so I was like, I need, I want to do something about that. I want to make my own stuff. I can't deal with this. So I started pouring with some, I mean, uh, I started pouring with better hooks. That was one of the first molds I got because, I mean, you know, the netheads notorious for, for, for catching fish, whether any size, you know, it's just when the bite's tough, you know, it's one of my go-tos for sure. So I started making better net heads and I've been throwing spurts on them, you know, throwing ball rattles. And so that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why I started pouring. Yeah. The net is a great bait, man. Uh, I caught my biggest fish of the season last year on a net, uh, 21 yeah. and three quarters, man. On a, yeah. On yeah. A it's net. crazy. They, they just love that little finesse bait. I don't yeah. know what to, that they, they, they kill for that presentation. I mean, especially, especially cold water when the bite's tough. Yep. I mean, and Aaron at, uh, that spring Lake tournament, when he caught Lunker, that was on yep. a, a Ned, that was a 21 inch. Uh, yep. Yeah. I, I, he caught, I, remember, I saw him yelling. And I, asked him <laughs> he caught him. I, mean, I saw him, I was like, what'd you catch it on? And he's like, you're not going to believe it. A Ned. I was like, damn. <laughs> I mean, you can't, it, it's a people, great bait. People, yeah, people make fun of her. They don't like, you know, wimp rods, spinning rods. But when in a tournament, hey, it's made me it's made me a good amount of money. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's really cool. I actually, I got some of them right here. Um, I went to a specific, particular style hook uh, because, you know, the blank man hooks were just junk. So, there, it's an eagle claw hook. It's what... um. Trocar makes stairs with tungsten now, or Eagle Claw tro, uh, Trocar. Yeah. But it's the same style hook, but without the three-point sharp, sharpen. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you right here. It's uh, they're really, really awesome. These hooks are super strong, and if I mean, it is I I prefer when I fish a net, I like to use light wire hooks. I don't like it's 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 a finesse presentation for me. Right. So a lot of these companies are coming out with these you know EWG nets with you know, four out hooks. That's that's not Ned fishing to me. No, it's so a shaky head. I stay, I stay with the, yeah, I stay with a light light wire hook. Um, penetration is just far better. I mean, you, you know, you're using a spinning rod, so you don't want to go crazy. And uh, these hooks, they're super strong. The way that has that that you know that bend to it, the penetration is phenomenal. My hookup ratio is insane with these. And if they do bend out, because I remember. I remember fishing a pond down the Cape. Um, it's one of my favorite smallie spots. It bent out right here. And then I bent it back. Then I probably caught another 40. I'm not even exaggerating. It was it was pre-spawn. It was insane. All different sizes of smallies. But I, I, I caught so many fish on one hook. Uh, it stayed sharp. And I don't know. I probably – that the Ned probably stayed on my rod for two months before I changed it out. Wow. Right? Which I have, I, I've never done that with – any other competitors i can't even call them competitors because i'm so small but <laughs> any other companies uh hooks now what sizes do you make in that um i make sizes i think it's the mold i have right now is 1 16th through a quarter ounce or maybe it's a little lighter than 1 16th uh yeah yeah 1 16th through a quarter ounce um i mean i would like to ex start expanding and get you know different size molds but you know, with the kid coming, trying to pinch pennies right now, not really, not really expanding the bait making right. versus actually working on you know the baby's room and stuff. So, Aaron Aaron Smith just commented. He said he needs to grab some of those. He anytime, brother. He is not a fan of the man. Yeah, yeah. Neds either. Yeah, I mean there there are some other good you know big companies that make them, but hey man, anytime you just shoot me a message, I'll make the color that you want and or whatever what sizes just let me know now you paint the heads all different colors or you just got the black no i paint i paint them different colors um i particularly uh depending what water clarity like uh red and chartreuse are some of my favorite nethead colors um i just happen to grab some of these for this right uh which are black i mean black black green pumpkin i always I use black color. i've never used any other color than black yeah yeah um for a while i was especially especially bed fishing i was you know when they won't 
bite of a, a giant soft plastic or a big soft plastic, I'll throw a fluke on a white one of these just so I can see the bite, you know? Right. And uh, do that. So I make them all different colors. That's awesome. Um, now, what else uh, you got going on? What else you making? All right. Uh, so my main baits, um, I have so football jigs. Big, big fan of the football jigs. I don't know if you guys can see Me that. Me too. I'll be throwing a football jig tomorrow. Yeah, I'm yeah. going out. So, I mean, oh, yeah, you're lucky. I wish I could go out. I'm <laughs> stuck in New Hampshire. Um, it's really cool. Uh, I take my time hand tying all my skirts. Um, I personally like to use rubber. I use a mix of rubber, silicone, whether it's round rubber or flat rubber, depending. I mean, you can ask me or you can tell me what you prefer, but I like, I like rubber on my skirts. Um, tends to give them more flair. Uh, you know, I got football heads and I got brush jigs. Brush jigs are great. Um, you know, you can flip with them. You can drag them, do anything, but it's, just, it's an all around decent head. I mean, once again, you know, I got that rubber skirts. It, it, they last longer as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan the, of rubber. Other jigs. Yeah, yeah, all hand tied. Um, yeah, then so, you don't you don't use uh, rubber bands, right? You you wire tying them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually I don't wire tie them. I um I hand tie them with uh, Kevlar thread. All right, I don't know all the details of tying. Yeah, a jig. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, another thing, I one of my favorites swim jigs, man. I know you like swim jigs. Yeah, I do. But uh. Yeah, I like making swim jigs all funky different colors. Um, that's actually the, that's the head. That's the head right there that I throw, man. That's yeah, yeah. Um, I do have remaining trapper hooks. I use a lot of trapper hooks for my uh, yeah for my stuff. Um, I don't understand why then, did they go yeah. out of business. Uh, so there's a whole big. I don't know the real true story, so this is all rumor. Um, supposedly. A, the guy who originated that box design uh, for financing, he had help from uh, you know a bigger company, and they basically screwed him in the contract, and then they started outsourcing, and then outsourcing something got too expensive, from what I heard, and they just couldn't keep up with it, so uh, they went under. Because I, um, I I was using that uh, for a drop shot hook for a while. Uh, yep. And it seemed to always catch them right in the roof of the mouth. It was yeah. I, I've had spectacular luck with the with trapper hooks. Um, I've never, excuse me, I've never used them for flipping or anything. I've always had them on my baits, and I have always been a real fan. The way that that box design is, so they can't, you know, their head shakes can't can't shake it off the curved hook. Um, and it's always been really good so that's why i bought them um and i really like them people that i know have really liked them you know but once again it's all preference now you make um, uh you make skirts for your neds too right yes i do i actually don't have any um uh, what happens is i usually make a bulk batch and then i sell them and i don't have any for myself uh i never i never have any extra jigs for myself how does that so, work how do they actually attach to the ned um, I actually hand tie them towards the base of the net, um, and then I put on, so I put on a bigger hook keeper that it hangs out up here. So the 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 bait uh, the, the 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 tie is down here, and then you know the skirt flares out. It's great. Um, gives a little more profile. Uh, whether you're not whether you're flipping in or darker water, clear water, you know different colors. But yeah, hand tie it towards the bottom. Put a bigger hook, a uh, bait keeper on there, and uh, rock and roll. You have good luck with uh, skirted nets. Um, gonna be honest, I've had equal luck. Uh, it's been you know the same thing. I've never been in a situation. I have yet to be in a situation where I've needed to throw a skirted net. Uh, usually they'll if they're they're biting, they'll bite the net. Um, I've actually I've only thrown probably one a handful of times because I end up selling all of them. <laughs> I probably have like one in my tackle box. I've never tried it. I yeah. think I'm going to too. Yeah, man. I, I, I people love them. That's like probably my biggest request. 
Yeah, I want to try that uh, skirt on the Neko rig too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. They have the, uh, what is it, BMC? They make the. Yeah, the they weights. make the nail weight with the skirt on yep. it. I don't know how much yeah, of a difference goes... it really makes, but it looks good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, who knows what the, what half of the stuff we do actually makes a difference. <laughs> it's more for it's us than it is the fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, and then I do make uh, vibrating jigs, but this is the funny thing I learned in the middle of making bait is, do you know that uh, the man has a patent on the blade to um, eye connection on jigs? Oh, so nobody else can put the, the blade? Yeah, so yeah, having a blade attached directly to the eye of the hook is patented by Z-Man. Really? Oh, I meant the man. <laughs> the man. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy uh, so if you look at other bladed jigs there either is a split ring or right. some sort of swivel some different type of connection except for the thunder cricket um the thunder cricket they actually are releasing the patent from the man which is is crazy have you tried that thunder cricket no that's the only one that's probably the only one i haven't tried yet uh it's it's i can't i don't I'm not sure what the difference is, whether the head is tungsten or not. Um, but it's basically, basically, a, a chatterbait. Really? I haven't yeah. tried it. I haven't even really looked at it that in depth either. I, yeah. I'm a, yeah, I, I, I pro I'm a project it. Z guy. I think the project Z is solid. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I'm not throwing mine, I have a project Z tied on. Do you have any of yours it's with you? Uh, man, I don't know if I can show them. <laughs> yeah, I do. I will show them. I mean, uh, let's see. I have, so I use this, uh, I call this one the Magnum. It's, uh, it's actually a one ounce. Holy jig. crap. Yeah. Um, I used it striper fishing this year. Uh, they crushed it, dude. It's awesome. Um, uh, I've never, I didn't use it. I used it at Caddo. I had a black and blue one. Um, but the bite in the cattle was so bad that it, I didn't even see a sniff. Um, but I do have one right here. This, yep, this is a, a, just a black one. I mean, one that I made for myself. Um, I didn't put any eyes on it because, you know, it's for stained water. So right. that really didn't matter to me. But, yeah, so it's got the connection that somebody else owns. Right. Um, that's and cool, though. You yeah, can make yeah. them for yourself that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't spend any money besides the stuff I've already, you know, paid for. But, I mean, last year I did a convention, a local convention, which was really cool. All the local guys got together and they sold stuff that they made. And I was able to basically cover all of my equipment in that one sitting. So, I mean, the, the love was awesome. Um, and I'm still in touch with a lot of guys that I'd sold to there. So, I mean... That's another thing why I love it is I've met people um, that I still keep in contact with who still buy my baits, which is supporting local, which is, is some of the best. It, 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 in my personal opinion, it's what keeps things going around. It definitely does. Uh, I like the community thing. I'd rather buy from somebody small than somebody big. I mean, it's going to help your son go to college one day, you know. It's, yeah, it, right. <laughs> it's going to... Uh, oh, he's going to... He's going to do that through fishing. He's going to you know, <laughs> call it fishing, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you have the kid on the way, and you touched on it a little bit, but do you have plans later to expand this, or are you just going with the flow? Uh, I mean, I'm just going with the flow. Uh, I'm a busy guy with work, and then, you know, trying to do all these traveling, traveling all over the place to do these trails and different things, so... Uh, I don't. I don't think it's ever going to be a full time thing, but it's definitely it's a hobby of mine where I got you know a couple hours, uh, you know, on a Sunday evening or something like that, or where somebody gets a hold of me is like, hey, can I get a couple of this, that, and that, and I'll make them up, and you know, I throw, I go into my garage, I just you know, fire up the heater, uh, throw a podcast or something on, and just go to town, and you know, I'm in my little happy bubble. Nice. Uh, those blades that you show, do you bend those yourself, or they come that way? Um, it all depends. Like, 
these I have a couple different style blades. Um, I have these circle blades. They're more round, but I uh, I I cut into them myself. Kind of rips through grass a lot better. Um, but yeah, I put that bend on myself. But and then you know I got you cut those. You cut that out. Uh, no, I get the blade themselves, and then I take um, a Dremel basically to all the the edges, and I make make the ridges. Yeah, that's what I meant. You make all those ridges on there. Yep, yep. That looks perfect. It's it's. I mean, I've done a ton, so it's it becomes pretty easy. But yeah, these are just you know. I would imagine that thing must really cut the grass when it comes through. It, it does. It it actually does. Um. Uh, but when I was testing them, I'm gonna have uh, to try that. Uh, let me know, man. Yeah, <laughs> when I was testing them, I was worried about it actually cutting into the line, and I've I've never, I've never seen like I, it's strictly I've strictly thrown them on braid when I was testing them just to see if I could see any nicks in the line with actually uh, without losing them. Um, and you know they're they're pretty good. They I've yet to have any issues, and I definitely feel like it goes through grass a lot better. Um, and it just sucks because that direct connection in the blade is the best thing to come through grass. I've tried everything in between. I've tried pouring swivels inside the head that attach to it. So the blade that the jig actually spins on the blade. So when it goes through the grass, um, it actually turns itself through the grass and it works for a while, but in order to make a strong connection, I have to use a crazy size swivel. So, you know, you can't really get those hook sets, but you know, it's, it's something I'll figure out. It's a, that's another thing. I'll right. Try out different I've seen a lot of people try to get around it. I didn't know that that's why because of the patent issue. Uh, now I do. But I've seen a yep. lot of people try a lot of different things, and I've yet to see anything that works. I've seen a lot of people have issues with the blade actually separating from the jig and uh, the hooks the eye of the hook opening up because a lot of guys will bend it open and then put something in there and yep. it just never works. Yeah, man, they, that company was smart and they, they pinned it. So they have it for, I don't know how many years. So it's a patent run for like 51 years or something. I could be wrong, but <sighs> I don't, it, it's, uh, I don't understand how but, something like that can even be patented. I mean, it's a connection. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, it's a, it's an invention, I guess. I don't know. Good for them. But I mean, until I receive a cease and desist, I will sell them to my friends. I mean, I'm probably not going to put them online. I got to make a website. Right. But I'm going to, you know, through word of mouth, you want to play the jig, let me know. Right. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Now, I know you you like to throw uh, spinner baits and chatter baits a lot. I've seen you throw them a yep. lot at tournaments, and we talked about it. What's your rod set up if you're throwing a chatter bait or a spinner bait? So spinnerbait, I like to throw, I don't like throwing a pool stick. Um, I use a medium, uh, medium fast action. Uh, a lot of times I felt in the past when I'd go to set the hook, uh, I'd either rip it out or, you know, short strikes are notorious with spinnerbaits. So I feel like having that little bit of give in a rod, um, I was able to get better penetration. You know, the fish would stay in the fish's mouth, even if he was short striking it. Uh, so that with, I don't know, 7, 1 to 1, 8, 1 to 1 reel. Not that, I'm not too particular on speeds with that. Um, so for my chatterbait, I like to go a little heavier. Uh, cause, you know, I'm pulling through grass a lot of the time. So I'd go uh, probably 7, 1, 7, 3, medium heavy, fast action. Um, some rods are better than others, you know, feeling the vibration of that jig. Um Currently, I have a, uh, what is it? It's probably my cheapest rod, but I feel like I can feel the vibration a lot better than any other. But it's, I think it's, a, yeah, loose fire, steer, carbon fire, carbon fire, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what I'm using for my chatterbait rod. And then for my spinnerbait setup, I have a, yeah, Skeet Reese, Wright McGill rod, which, I mean, they're cheap, but they're durable. Yeah, I know you have uh, you have quite a few of those Skeet Reese rods. Uh, yeah, so you... what happened is that I, I used one, I loved it. Um, it was super cheap, bought them all on sale, so I ended up buying warranties on almost all of them. So when I break them, I just bring them back and get a new one. That's awesome. So, <laughs> it's called, you know, 
budget kayaking, man. <laughs> hey, if if they work and you like them, I mean, go with it. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I use a, a medium heavy extra fast for my chatterbaits. Um, and most of the time, the same setup for my spinnerbaits. But I've been thinking about changing my spinnerbait rod to uh, a cranking rod. So it's got that yeah. glass in it. So it's got that good parabolic bend and everything. Hope to get better hookups with that. Because like yeah. you said, that short strike or you rip it out of their mouth. And that happens a lot. And I throw spinnerbaits a lot. So I've been trying yes, to yep. figure out a way to uh, avoid that. I tried the medium. I I don't like throwing medium. It's too light for me. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't like it. Um, I get it. I actually have a 7-7 a seven, seven heavy rod that I sometimes throw my chatterbait on. <laughs> <laughs> but my chatterbait, I'll show you my chatterbait setup another time. I don't like to yep. show a lot of people uh, the trailer that i use is like five inches jeez so it, it's heavy it's a half ounce chatterbait with a almost five inch swim bait on the back of it uh <laughs> dude it, it crushes it that uh yeah I, I, that I knockout round at um where what's the name of that place where i what fished against of? uh gabe Gabe, yeah, uh, that was one of uh, that I fit. I used that there, and then when I won it against Ken and Mike yeah. Elric, I was throwing the same thing. It, yeah. it catches <laughs> big fish. I don't catch a lot of fish with it, but yeah, man, when a fish hits it, you know damn well it's a good one. It's kind of like the swim bait mentality. You know, you throw a giant swim bait, you're not going to catch a lot of fish, but when you do, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah. The pickerel love it too. Oh man, pickle! <laughs> <laughs> now your all your jigs and stuff. I'm sure you make them in like every size. Yeah, that's available. Yeah, yeah. I have some. Mold, I have a couple molds where I have two different the same mold but two different uh, weight spectrums. You know, heavier and finesse. So, what's your plans in uh, 2020 as far as fishing wise? What trails are you going to? I'm going to try to hit every, so there's, thank God there's three trails instead of five. Yeah. Uh, Cause that would have been super tough with the kid. You know, he's coming out in March. I'm going to miss national championship. Bummed about that, but you know, he's starting a new thing, right. a new life. You know, my life's changing. So I'm rooting for March 16th, by the way, cause that's my birthday. So I'm rooting yeah, yeah. for March 16th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I suppose to come out March 26th. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very possible. Uh, I'm hoping he comes out earlier, probably a month earlier. So, uh, <laughs> it doesn't make going to the national championship in the future an issue. Yeah. But that's just, Oh, that'll be crazy. He comes out the yeah. last week of March. <laughs> you got a oh, birthday God. party every NC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then for the rest of my life, every birthday party that huh. we have for him, just to be like, oh, I could be fishing right now. <laughs> Honey, we're going, yeah. we're going <laughs> to Alabama for his birthday. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, why don't you just have him down there? It'd be so much better. <laughs> but yeah, my girlfriend's not having any. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. Her birthday is the last weekend of March, too. Hers is the 29th. So it's like a double whammy for me. Oh, yeah. Dude, you should just uh, get you should just get married around the same time, and then you get them all three over at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I wouldn't feel almost as bad as not going. But we'll see. We'll see in the future where the national championship's going to be. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to hit every trail. Uh, so it's going to be three, which is cool. Then the, then the regional championship is in Maine. Perfect. That's not too far from me, far from us. Uh, and then I don't know if you, you were watching the Ken Wood and, uh, Scott Butcher, the way in, uh, Chad was throwing out there that there's the, uh, there's a pro open yeah. potentially in the Northeast. I had heard but rumors what? and then I was told it wasn't going to happen. And then Chad exactly. the other night now says it is happening um i'm lost yeah you pulled that out of friggin left field uh, when he said that everybody was like what what's going on and then uh <laughs> so i don't know hopefully that's lake champlain because that place is phenomenal. yeah 
That place is incredible. I know and, uh, you know, Joe Brancato has been pushing hard for Lake Champlain. Uh, that kid, he's in my messages every day uh, talking about Champlain, and I don't blame him. I've never fished there. He has, and yep. I wish I had fished All right, there. Joe. It's not gonna. It's not gonna be in uh, Champlain. Sorry, but <laughs> uh, yeah, every, that, that that that's an incredible fishery. I mean, there's a reason why they always have you know big tournaments on it. Right. It's for a good reason. You've been there before. Um, yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you where though. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I went there on vacation when I was a kid with my old man, um, but I never fished there. My no, my no. old man wasn't a fisherman, so he was more of a yeah, yeah, sightseer. I gotcha. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I have a buddy who actually he he his family has a cabin up there, uh, or a cottage rather, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to go up there. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope they do that uh, pro open, because then it gives us a shot yeah, at going to the pro yep. championship. True. I mean, we all put yeah. in that that money to the first pro tour, and then got shafted in the end. I mean, they, I know they gotta gotta do what they gotta do, but yeah, I mean, last year I wasn't able to do the pro tour. Uh, I mean, this year I probably wouldn't be able to either because you know I'm gonna be on a budget. But I mean, it wouldn't even be worth it for us. No, uh, if the the entry it's at I mean the the membership seventy five bucks, which is nothing. Uh, but then to have to travel all to the south every single time. I mean, uh, what is it? Isn't there one in Wisconsin, La Crosse? Uh, I think it, I think so. I think that's the closest one. I mean, when I went out there for the trail championship, that that place was phenomenal. That place was I I had I literally I caught so many fish for like three days straight. Um, that's what I've always heard about fish. that place. Is it's one of those places you can go for numbers. It it I caught a lot of fish and it was so much fun and it, it, it would make it worth it you know drive the I don't even remember how many hours it was like fourteen or something but it was awesome I mean if I do decide to sign up for the pro tour it probably I'd probably try to make out for that one right yeah I I had thought about doing the pro tour but if I was gonna do it I was going down there and staying down there just gonna fish it the like do the whole yeah, circle right. and work my way back. Um, and I budgeted it all out. It would have cost me like four grand to do it. Um, but it's really not in the budget. Not logical. Not yet. Anyways. No, no. Yeah. Maybe, maybe next year, maybe there'll be a, you know, with bass. I mean, I'm definitely, I would like to get in one bass, uh, trail. One, one yeah. Trail they they have one, uh, through. at lacrosse too. That's the closest bass yeah. one for us if oh, maybe that's if i do a bass one that's going to be the one i do yeah i highly recommend it yeah i would love to yeah. get out there <laughs> i wanted to go out there um for the the trail championship with you guys but i just couldn't couldn't fit it in yeah i uh, know i get it plus i mean, I, d I had did mind? so poorly um <laughs> during the season that it didn't even matter if i went there the points weren't going to do anything for me um yeah i would have had to win it to make it even worth it so there was no yeah, sense right, in right. going i had probably my worst season ever there's, there's always this season man 2020 yeah uh, that's what i'm looking forward to that's what i'm looking forward to positive mental yeah. attitude i've been working on it all the time <laughs> like I'm yeah. I'm kind of a negative person. At least I was a negative person. I'm trying to change that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is. It's so easy to get in your own head yeah. when you're by yourself kayak. It's so easy to get. In yeah, your I get head. flustered, man, and that's it. The once that yeah. ball starts rolling, I don't know how to stop it. Yeah, I hear so, you. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I need to prevent that ball from rolling. I need to just yeah. keep that ball inside. <laughs> Well, I mean, towards the end of the season, I remember you, you were posting hogs every day. Yeah. Uh, towards the end of the season, I was I was starting to figure it out. That it, it wasn't yeah. what I was using. It wasn't the techniques that I was trying to do. It was in my head. The whole problem yeah. was in my, my brain. I was the problem. 
And I started to figure that out. Actually, Chris Catucci, I had fished with him just go out fun fishing. And he started talking about like the mental part of fishing and things like that. Um, and kind of woke me up that it was me that was the problem. Uh, and right, right. I started getting better and better. And then I went on that good run towards the end of the season, won, won the, the knockout series. Um, I was coming in in the top, you know, two, three in the OSKB tournaments. Um, yeah, yeah. So I definitely figured it out. I was the problem. So I've been working on mental stuff this off season instead of working on trying to find new ways to catch fish. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, yeah, it's more important. You're doing something that you love and then you get there with that negative, you know, negative feeling and it just takes away from what you love. So that, that's awesome to hear that. Yeah. You know, you work, you, you, if you, if, progress, if you, uh, you know? get a chance, watch those, uh, uh, Gerald Swindle does the, PMA positive mental attitude videos. Uh, you can find some of them on YouTube. Uh, you got the whole series is on that. I don't know if you have that bass university. I don't have that subscription. It's kind of expensive. 150 bucks a year. Yeah, no, I, but if you go on YouTube, you can get like the, the little parts of each video. And then I just watch them in a row. Um, and he talks about positive mental attitude. He seems like, he had kind of the same problem, uh, being negative. If you lose a fish, break a rod, <laughs> you know. Um, and he came, he he had this thing on there about he wears a rubber band on his wrist, and I'll show you right now. I I have it right here, a rubber band on my wrist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anytime you have a negative thought, snap that rubber band as hard yeah, as you can yeah. on your wrist, and you will learn. Once you start to even think negative, you're thinking, damn, I'm going to slap myself with that elastic. And yeah, right, it right. works, man. I've been wearing it for like two, three weeks, and it definitely works. Yeah, uh, I got a nice bruise That's on awesome. my wrist, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're going to you're yeah. gonna fish uh, Lake George? Absolutely. Su- Very excited for Susquehanna. that. Susquehanna. Yep. Gonna fish that. You know, I'm really bugged uh, about that. Is they had the date originally as the 20th, yeah. and then they moved it to the 27th, and I had no idea. I booked a whole vacation, like a whole vacation, oh. like for my girlfriend and my family, like, and we can't change that now. So I mean, I might still be on maternity, uh, paternity leave rather. So I might stay a whole week. So it might work out to my benefit, but it might whatever. We're going to figure it out. That's, that's the one I'm but, looking yeah. forward to the most. Uh, I went there two years ago. Really? Um, yeah. I, ca- I think I came in like 15th or something. It wasn't great, but I caught fish all day long. Um, I don't want to yeah. say I caught like 20 or 30 fish. They were just all the same size, you know, 13 to 15 yeah. inches. Uh, it's the worst. I lost one real good one. Ken was right there, watched it snap my line. Uh, after it jumped out of the water about 15 times, it was a good one. It was definitely a 18 to 20 inch smallie. Um, yeah. Also the, the river that year was super high. Uh, I fished, I fished a hundred yard stretch on a current break with like 10 guys. (laughs) Yeah. Like, and we all caught fish all day. I caught them all on the net. (laughs) Every one of them. The Ned Man. Uh, the PB and J Big TRD. Yeah. I would just, I go all the way up as far as I could in the river, and then just drift back down on that current break and just drag that Ned yep. the whole way. And they were hammering it. Right, right. You didn't have the, you didn't have the PDL uh, yet, right? No, I had. Uh, that's when I still had the troller motor. Um, but it it just trying to control it in that current i even tried to go out into the river and i was like nah this isn't even worth it i'm catching fish right here i'll just stay right here Uh, a couple of guys went out into the river and i saw they were struggling i mean that that was tough three weeks prior three weeks prior to the tournament um i went down to hershey park uh with the family and i brought my kayak down because i wanted to pre-fish uh 
I didn't end up I didn't end up to do it in the tournament, but I brought my kayak to prefish and then I pull up to a couple spots in the river. I was like, holy smokes, this is like rapids. I can I'm not touching this. So I can't only imagine. I mean, it wasn't that long after. It's still you know, rain still came right. uh between the time frame. So when that tournament came, I was watching the leaderboard like crazy and I was like, Oh man, this is this looks tough. We went where we launched there was this overpass, uh like a train trestle, uh and then uh there was like a regular automobile bridge underneath it. Uh, and we're going underneath there. And Ken's like, look up. And I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out what he's talking about. And I can't see it from the angle. And then I, I see it. Dude, there's this bathtub that you know came out of somebody's house. Way up yeah. on top of one of the pillars. And I mean, this thing was like 20 feet above our head. Like that's how high <laughs> the water was. <laughs> Like, holy Jeez, shit, man. I couldn't imagine anything <laughs> like that. We don't see no, anything like nuts. that up yeah. here. Uh, yeah. It, it was amazing to see how high that water must have been. A bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> 20 that's... feet above our head. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Um, how about East West Harbor? Are you going there? Absolutely. Um, yeah, East West Harbor. Uh I caught some when I when I went there this year. I uh, caught some decent fish. Uh, then the bite turned off in the afternoon. So I mean, I have a fairly strong game plan. I mean, I'm probably gonna do the same thing I did last year. Uh, and everybody that I know that you know did well. Jason Gardner did really well. Ken did pretty good. I mean, I did the same thing as them except they just had a couple spots where they're just crushing fish, and then the bite turned off for me, and they kept catching fish. So. East and West is cool. I mean, it's 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 a hike. It's ten hours away, but whatever. You know, you go with somebody else and just have fun. Right. I don't know if I'm gonna make that one. Um, it all depends really on how I do in the other two. Uh, if I do well yeah. enough in the other two to qualify for regionals, then I probably won't go. But if I need to go, then I will be going. Um, yeah. I uh, I I feel like I definitely have to do all three. I mean, especially with how close I made it this year. I I, this, I can't leave any room for error, right. so I I need to maximize chance. You did absolutely awesome this year, man. I was super stoked for you. Um, I yeah, I love seeing everybody around here do good. Uh, but when I started seeing your name at the top, man, that that was that was real good. I mean, you're a good guy, uh, good young kid. Thanks. Um, so to see you do good was great. Uh, I wanted to see you beat Ken just so we could rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> I was there for a little bit, man. Then I then I choked. I started to choke hard towards the end. You know, uh, eerie. I didn't do well. I just, uh, you know, I just there's a couple, you know, a couple tournaments where I didn't do well and he did fairly well, which you know, I put him above. Good for him. He's a friggin' hammer. Uh, I've also I've I've lot of, I've learned a lot from him. Uh, I think we all have. So, yeah, it's crazy. He's 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 slowly becoming. I don't know, a godfather of the northeast <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a good way to just, way to say it yeah he really is he's one of the nicest guys i've ever i've ever dealt with i'm honored to be a part of you know makb where he has run these things it's become a family the whole northeast is like every year it's just getting tighter and tighter and, and you know traveling all over the country with you guys it's just been phenomenal it's it's been such a huge part of my life and you know, when i talk to people who have no idea what we're doing they just don't understand it. I'm like, that's cool. That's fine. I do, and they do. That's all it yep. matters. It makes losing so much better. <laughs> when yeah, cause when we're there and time. enjoying time together, I mean, if you lose, yeah. it doesn't matter because we're there. It's almost like yeah. we went on a weekend trip with the guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. We right. would spend the same then, amount of money seen. anyways, so it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> the people that we lose to, they, they're our friends right. anyways. Right. Right. I love seeing everybody do well. Uh, I don't. I don't yeah. have any hard feelings towards anybody if they win. Uh, there's always ball busting. It's it's part of it. No, we gotta we gotta make yeah. fun of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's That's it's how, a great it group of guys. No ball busting. And if anybody out there is even thinking about joining kayak fishing, just do it. Don't don't wait. Don't think about it. Just do it. Come join a local club, yep. uh, meet some great people, uh, and you'll have a great time. I promise. Hands down. 
All right, we've been on for about an hour. I try to keep these things down to an hour. Uh, yeah, tell yeah. people where they could get your stuff, how they can get in touch with you. Um, so I have an Instagram account. It's called uh, three, uh, spell it out, underscore XS, underscore fishing. Uh, you can either shoot me a direct message on that um, or Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, 3X is Fishing actually has a Facebook page. Check it out on that. Just get a hold of me, you know, uh, and we could make something happen. You know, shoot me questions, love questions, you know, and put it in order. And, uh, I, you know, I ship all over the place. Just let me know. Uh, and I'd be glad and honored to fill an order for anybody. I, uh, I put the link for 3X is Fishing in the description in this video. So anybody watching, you can click on that Facebook page. Uh, you can get in touch with John there. Um, there's also the Donate Me in the uh, description underneath that. Anybody wants to donate to me, feel free. This takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. I'm not begging for money. I'm just letting you know it's there. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm going to lay the red carpet out for John. Let him thank anybody who wants to thank. And we'll end the show on that. So, John, it's all yours. Cool. All right. I uh, just want a big, big shout out, you know, to you, Justin. Um, you know, got OSKB. Uh, fished a couple tournaments with you guys. You guys are great. Um, MAKB, you know, MAKB, you know, Brotherhood, family, um, our sponsors. Uh, we got, you know, Go Bananas, uh, Ratfish Lures, uh, Titan Tungsten. You know, we got them. Uh, who else? Rocky Ledge Tackle, uh, Dakota Lithium. Uh, and then I want to thank, you know, anybody who's ever helped me get somewhere to a tournament or, you know, buy products. Um, I actually, I just want to thank everybody else. Thank everybody for making kayak fishing such an incredible experience. Um, so, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, we can link up, make something happen, or even go fishing. Uh, just let me know. I'm always down. Oh, I mean, ice fishing too right now. That's uh, I've been doing a lot of that. So until the open water comes, let me know. All right, John. Thanks for coming on. Um, I wish we had more ice than we have because I've only been out once. We have no ice here yeah. in Rhode Island now. Uh, Massachusetts is tough too. I've been going up to Maine, uh, you know, to catch, to you know, to scratch the itch. Um, We're going out so. in the yaks tomorrow and Sunday. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be warm enough. Hell, it's going to be 50, no, 60 degrees. Yeah, uh, tomorrow's 60, and Sunday is possible like 67 degrees. That's insane. Sunday, there's a chance of some rain in the morning, but I got rain gear. I'll throw it on, and hopefully I can catch him yeah, on a jerk nice. bait or a football jig. <laughs> yeah, or a net. Yeah, or the net. Yeah. All right, John. Yeah, for Thanks for coming on, brother. Yeah, we'll see you. All right, everybody. Take care. Good night. All right, guys. That was John Ferreira from 3X's Fishing. We got to thank John for coming on and talking about that. That was a, a good in-depth description of his baits. Uh, guys, hit him up. He's a local guy. Not trying to make a million bucks, just trying to make a good product and build relationships with anglers in the region. I got to thank all you guys for the support, for coming on, watching the show, hitting the like button, sharing, um, doing all the things you guys have been doing. Next week, we got two shows coming up. Um, Thursday... On Top Dogs will be Brian Nunziato. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But he is the Angler of the Year from Adirondack KBF. I've never met Brian. Um, so that should be a good show. I'll have a lot of questions for him. Um, I like interviewing people that I don't know very well. It seems like the questions are easier because I don't know anything about them. Um, and then on Friday Spotlight, we will have Greg Maticatis from Tight Lines Worldwide. He's going to talk about Tight Lines Worldwide and what they stand for 
and he's also going to talk about his new kayak fishing trail it's a new england bass and division elite it's an mlf style team tournament so we'll get into that with him get some more details because i'm looking forward to that i like uh new formats so we'll see you guys then we'll see you next week thanks for joining see you next time